Hi everyone, hope you are having a good day. So authentication is one of the most fundamental part of building modern software. But oftentimes it takes a lot of time and effort to just set up a basic auth, especially if you want to do it right. Uh, so that's why platforms like Clerk or AAuth exist, whose sole purpose is to handle authentication uh, for your app. They make authentication super easy and even comes with like pre-built UIs. Uh, so for example, let's go to React Components and here you can see some of the pre-built components the profile you can see they just automatically generates this user profiles and and like organization list everything right this is very neat but it comes with a pretty hefty price especially if you go with their b2b prices which depending on your project it may or may not be worth it so when i was working on my saas makers tracker which is a crm for content businesses so a B2B SaaS, I needed a auth solution that works for my project and also isn't expensive. So in this video, I will share the authentication flow I used on my SaaS. Hopefully this will help you to make more informed decision when you work on your own auth strategy. All right, so let's use this auth line to understand the typical authentication options you have out there, left being the hardest and right being the easiest. So the most difficult would be obviously if you just hand code everything yourself, right? Everything. And the easiest would be if you just use a managed service like you have clerk or Kindle, Kindle, Kindy. Now there are pros and cons in both you code everything yourself some of the pros would be first one obviously it's the cheapest second would be you have full control over your code base but the biggest con with this is it requires a lot of time So if you are trying to launch an app first or trying to launch an MVP or something, right? So it will take a lot of time that you probably cannot afford. And that's where this managed solution comes in. So it will not be the cheapest. In fact, it probably is the most expensive solution you can go with. Then you will probably not have all control over your code base. Although you can use webhooks that these auth services provide to sync your own database with the auth database, uh, but that will probably require additional configuration. And the biggest pro with this is it doesn't take much time to set up. So you can probably like set up a clerk within like a 30 minutes or so. I wouldn't say 10 minutes if you have some coding experience. Now you can see there's a big gap between the left and the right side. It would be great if there was something in the middle, right? And fortunately, we have those solutions. Somewhere around here, we can place auth or password.js. These are open source authentication libraries that handle a lot of these authentication code for you. So if we check out auth.js, here you can see they have a bunch of examples with different libraries. So let's say you work with Next.js. Got it and they will just walk you through the steps you need to follow so here you can see once you when you import next auth from your package uh, they expose sign in and sign out functions that you can just call uh, to handle these functions and then you can go to a database where it will also walk you through how to set up the schemas uh, based on the framework you are using so you are using prisma here you can see they have an example user model and sessions application tokens so you can just follow easily follow along and be sure you can set up authentication with an hour or so they also provide like social auth so if you go to providers uh here you will see a bunch of social platforms google okay so you can just get your google auth id and secret and use their Google providers and yeah just follow along and you should be good to go 
so let's get back to our auth line make a list for this now it will be the cheapest because most of these frameworks are open source so it's pretty and in terms of full control kind of have a lot of control but since you are like importing all these functions from the library you are kind of using the library's code right so which actually is a good thing because sometimes you might screw up and write bad code so these libraries are very trial and tested so uh, it should be more secure than anything right most likely but still you are losing some control when you are using a third party library right so i would probably put it on a moderate and then in terms of time i would say it is still somewhere in the middle because they do provide these helper functions but you also need to write this code to set up this in your project and so this is pretty much the auth line so when you see this you're probably thinking okay auth js or this is probably the best option which you probably would be right for the most part but for me i didn't even want to spend okay time on the authentication i just wanted to be done uh, as quick as possible so fortunately there are solutions which can sit somewhere in here all right so the platform that kind of sits between medium and easy is firebase or super let me show you what i mean so i'm at firebase docs you can see kind of same as next auth firebase also provides this uh rebuild functions for example create user with email password if you need uh, email and password authentication so all this function provide the auth config and email password and firebase does the rest and then when you need to sign in you can import this sign in with email and password function and yeah pretty much works the same so the main reason why i chose firebase over next auth is email link authentication this feature allows you to verify users email that you probably cannot do with auth.js probably set up with a different email providers like resend or something uh, to handle this but i like how it comes pre-built with uh, firebase firebase also comes with pre-built uis which for my case i didn't use i will explain it later why i didn't need that but yeah you have these options uh, if you need so if you go back to our line pros and cons for firebase now in terms of price it is not free but it's a lot cheaper than uh, something like clerk so i would give it okay in terms of price and then for same as clerk you will be losing a lot of control because you are offloading that auth to a third party service and then for time it is pretty much the same so yeah i think this is the line of current auth industry so for my case this one served my need firebase for my authentication but this is actually not the whole story this whole line or scenario works really well if your app is a b2c app B2C. Now my SaaS Maker Tracker is actually a B2B app, which means it's a business that will serve other businesses, uh, content businesses, right? So I actually needed a lot of B2B features so that Clark offers. For example, they provide components and APIs for managing teams, right? In a business, you probably will have employees. For my case, in Maker Tracker, a content creator might have editors. They want to add their team or accountants or assistance right but firebase doesn't come with all this organization maintenance features right and that's where Vercel comes in Vercel has this next.js SaaS starter kit thanks to lee for making this it's a great starter template comes with a lot of cool features including organization uh, or slash team management it uses next.js tailwind and postgres uh, the tech stack that i was planning to use anyways so this was a perfect uh, solution for me all right so let's get back to the diagram so if i'm building a b2b app and i'm using next.js my solution would be 
using Firebase with next starter key. All right, so now let me give you a demo and then we can check out the code. Go to login. I have login option with email and password and also Google for social login. You can see when you click on it, it takes you to a Firebase link. And I'm back to the dashboard. If you go to settings, uh, this billing management UI, this account settings UI, all this came from uh, the Next.js starter kit. There's also another section to invite team members which I'm currently working on, so I commented it out uh, for now. But if I show you how everything works in the code, login page. Now there's all this UI uh, on top. You can see the context, password. And here you can see I'm importing this sign in pop up function from Firebase and providing this auth config and Google provider. Google login and then I get a token from uh, Firebase next I have this create user function which basically checks if the user already exists or not that's great uh, if it doesn't it creates a new user I have this user table to save some of these key informations uh, and this auth ID that I get from Firebase then if you scroll down here you can see teams which is basically different businesses so whenever someone signs up, I also create a team for him. Over here, new team. And these teams, I save the business name, uh, the Stripe information for uh, payment processing. Then you can see a team members, which connects teams with users. And by this way, you can connect your organizations with your team members, right? All this like just came from the starter templates. Uh, I didn't need to do much. And yeah, that's pretty much it. That's how I handle authentication for my SaaS. Now, I'm not saying don't use Clerk. It is a great product and has one of the best developer experience that I had. In fact, if I didn't use the next starter kit, I probably would have went for this solution as it takes the least amount of time to set up. I just wanted to give you an example how you should think of the problem you are trying to solve and come up with the best solution uh, available to you and not just randomly use something because someone on the internet told you so. Alright, that sums up the video. Hope you guys liked it. I will see you guys next time. Bye-bye.